This is Raven Dana and welcome to Walking Between the Worlds. I'm glad that you could join me today. It is Sunday, November 6th, already almost a week into November. It's hard to believe. And yet last night, time shifted. At least for those of us in the United States, time shifted. And I think it's a good reminder when, when time moves on us that we are headed toward the winter and toward the dark time, which typically is a time when we ought to rest and reflect and go deep into the darkness, sit in the silence, not just in the dark of night, but in our own silence, in the silence within us, and see what's there for us. See what we've been neglecting, ignoring, uh, keeping ourselves too busy to attend to. You know, it's those things that we sweep under the rug that come back and, well, maybe become a little scary later on down the road. And I think we have such an association with fear and darkness that we need to look at this. That the darkness is not something to be afraid of. In the dark of night is when we see the shining moon and the brilliance of the stars. It's only in the darkness, deep within the earth, in the dark earth herself, that a seed can sprout. It is only in the darkness of the womb that we grow. So darkness, even though it's become associated with fearful things, it's also a place of regeneration, the quiet, the silence of the middle of the night, the silence in the darkest part of our mind, when there's nothing to worry about, nothing to concern ourselves with, but to take a look at what might be there. Again, what are we ignoring? What are we dismissing? What have we brushed under the rug? And not just that, what joy, what pleasure, what relationships have we let slide? Whatever we don't feed and water shrivels, withers, right? So think about that. We're moving into the darkness of the year, into the time when uh, we're supposed to rest, you know, rest and regroup and recover from the busy season and the planting and the harvest and the storing and to enter that part of the cycle where we can be still and be with each other and build relationship and share and go deep within ourselves to mine what's down in there and to bring that magic back to the world. So this is a time of year when I would invite you to pay particular attention to your dreams. If you're not accustomed to recording your dreams, I highly recommend that you begin a journal that's just for dreams, intuition, synchronicities, odd coincidences, that kind of thing because that comes from all of those rise from the dark. And again, that darkness within us is not bad, it's not evil. It's that place of deep, deep creativity and profound knowing. It's down deep in the dark within us that we know the things that we don't know how we know. So I'm going to invite you to do a few different things this winter, starting today. The first, again, is to get yourself a dream journal. And even if you're not typically someone who remembers dreams, if you just have a snippet, if you just have a way that you feel when you wake up, that's okay. Start there. Jot it down. You can begin the night before with an intention to have a dream, with a promise that if you have a dream, you'll pay attention to it. Right, it's a communication with a very deep part of your awareness. There's a gateway in dreaming that we cross through to visit other realities, other parallel worlds, other times and places, other versions of ourselves. It's a place where there's a door that we can walk through and visit the land of the dead and those who have gone before us. It's a place where we can cross through and examine and explore future possibilities for us and take a look at what we're doing and is what we're doing taking us where we want to go or taking us someplace we don't want to end up. So all of those things are great reasons for recording your dreams. 
Dreams can also be wonderful vehicles for healing. In our dreams, we can receive clues about things going on in our bodies and in our lives that in our waking state, we may not be paying attention to. So again, enter the darkness with me. We'll talk more about dreams later on in the month, but for now, just that one piece would be a great way to start entering the darkness. And the second thing, I'm gonna give you three things. Record your dreams and pay attention to them. Write them down, share them with somebody. You can even email me, share them with me. I'm good with that. The second thing I'd like you to do is actually, literally sit in the dark. And if you can do it outside, that's even better. Just for 10 minutes to go sit in the silence, in the darkness, to go, if you can, to a place where it's not too filled with light so you can see the sky and the stars. And if you're in a place that is very bright, then do it in your home. Turn the lights off in a room and just sit in the silence and breathe, take it in. Take in the sounds and the smells and the sensations that you normally don't notice. Just take it in. So that's another practice. Again, if you just did it a couple times a week for 10 minutes, that would be a, a good start in noticing what shows up when you're in the darkness of your own mind, when you're in the quiet space in between thoughts. Okay, and the third practice that I would recommend is to investigate what it is you think that you're afraid of in the dark. What does the dark represent to you? If you do have a fear of the dark, what's that about? Right, we have all kinds of stories about things that happen in the dark and spooky and scary things about the dark. Well, what else happens in the dark? Very often the pleasure of lovemaking happens in the dark. Very often the very best dreams happen, of course, in the dark. It's, it's in the dark that your cat comes next to you and rubs her face against yours. It's in the dark that your dog lays across your legs and sighs and cuddles up. These are also things that happen in the dark. It's in the dark that you look up and feel awe and wonder at the splendor of the sky and you recognize a star that's not a star at all and you know that you're looking at a planet, Venus or Jupiter. You can see Jupiter by the moon, by the way, at this time of year. So this, this is your third idea for playing the game of entering the dark and opening your possibility for making the dark a wonderful, healing, and informative place to enter, a place to be, a place from which you can call forth magic into your regular, ordinary, daily life. Okay, great, because the darkness is pure potential. So it's just a short conversation today. I just wanted to have about the movement toward winter and for us to consciously slow down a little bit and enjoy and befriend the dark. Now, I'll do a quick meditation with you. If you'd like to relax a little bit, that would be marvelous. So get yourself in a comfortable position and take a few very slow, very deep breaths. Just get comfortable with your back supported and allow yourself to feel the sensations of breathing and close your eyes and just notice your breath rising up on the inhale and drifting down on the exhale. Breathing in, you breathe in the whole world. And breathing out, you exhale yourself back into the world. Relax. Float on the sensation of your breath. Feeling your body soften and relax a little more with every exhale. Now imagine yourself sitting in a favorite place, maybe a comfortable chair somewhere in your home, maybe a space under a favorite tree, 
just let yourself imagine that space and feel yourself fully there. And you notice that it's twilight, that the sun has set and the shadows are getting darker. The air is the perfect temperature and you relax as the world darkens around you. You relax into that dark space. It's comfortable, it's safe, and it's known. And you feel your body let go even a little more And you feel so relaxed. You begin to remember a place from your childhood that you especially loved. It was a place of joy and pleasure. Maybe a place where you daydreamed or played with a special friend. And if no memory comes to mind, that's okay. You can make something up. Travel with your imagination back to a time when you're maybe six or seven or eight and imagine yourself in the most wonderful place, enjoying yourself, playing, and notice everything around you. Notice where you are in that place. And begin to breathe it in, as if you're breathing in the joy and the pleasure and the play, breathing it back into your body Breathing it back into that space, that place where you sit in the darkness, that comfortable, comforting place. And you keep breathing, now aware that you're breathing that energy and that deep ease all the way back into your body, into the moment into the room in which you currently rest. Calling yourself back and bringing with you this feeling of deep ease. Breathe yourself all the way back, bringing back a bit of that magic with you. Bring your senses back fully to the breathing and feel the way your body rises up and then settles down on your exhale. Return fully feeling relaxed and refreshed and allow your eyes to open. And I thank you for taking that short journey with me. I'll be back in a day or two with a longer meditation in which we will enter the dark. And I'm reminding you that on this coming Wednesday, I have a class starting. And if you would like to uh, take the class, of course you can, it will just be online. If you would like the extra benefits of receiving an email with notes and links and um, some home uh, fun, fun assignments, um, then you can go to my website at ravendana.com and um, you can make a payment on that class and you don't have to pay, you know, you know, there is a suggested price, you can pay whatever you want to receive the extra items. Uh, and otherwise, again, the class will be up for free and you can enjoy it that way as well. 
So have a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Uh, now that we are floating around in time, time has jumped in the middle of the night. And I wish you a lot of joy and pleasure for the rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in to Raven Dana, Walking Between the Worlds. Bye now.